Hey everybody, today we're going to be learning about forms of government. This is Florida Standard 3.1 for civics, which is going to be comparing and talking about all the different forms of government that there are. If you want to pause the video to take a note, please do so, uh, and off we go. So if you compare it all the governments of the world, you're going to find one thing in common, and that is somebody is in charge. And whoever's in charge is going to look very different depending on where you are in the world. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. You might go to one place and find that only one person is in charge and holding all the power. Whereas if you go to another place, you're going to find that the people are in control of the government. So we need to define what form of government means. And that is the way a government is structured. It also asks the question, who has the power? And it might seem like there's a lot of possible solutions when we ask that question, but in reality, there's only a limited amount of answers you might receive. So looking at this chart here, we see that no one might be in charge, or one person might be in charge, a few or some might be in charge, or everybody here is in charge. And you need to know every single one of these to pass your EOC. And so we're gonna kick it off getting started when no one is in charge, which we call anarchy. And we can write down in our notes that this is the absence of any form of government or any kind of authoritative control. Now, anarchy can actually mean many different things to a lot of people these days, but for our civics purposes, Anarchy is simply a form of government when no one is in charge. There is no authoritative figures, there is no police force, there is no government or law system or court system. It's actually pretty wild and chaotic. Looking at our video here, maybe he's in, well, he's definitely not in charge. Maybe he's in charge, maybe she's in charge, maybe that kid's in charge. Well, nobody's in charge. And with anarchy as the form of government, there is no government. And that's kind of weird to think about, but nobody is in control. You can imagine this in a real life scenario. It would be a lot more violent and a lot more dangerous for the citizens in that country. And so it's very difficult to give a modern example. You say, hey, Mr. Wright, give me, give me a country. Name a country where this is happening right now. And there really aren't any examples. What we see in history are during times of revolution or during times of crisis, we see states of anarchy. So, for example, in the English Civil War, after England was done beating up on each other and they overthrew their government, well, they said, well, they looked around and said, well, now what? Now who's in charge? Nobody's in charge. And so there was a state of anarchy. The same thing happened during the French Revolution. We overthrow the government. Now nobody's in control. The government is no longer paying the police force or, you know, somebody to keep the peace. And so the citizens are left in a state of anarchy until they can pick up the pieces and get a government up and running again. Uh, maybe a modern example here would be during Hurricane Katrina. If some of you guys can remember back to that time. You'll notice here that the Gulf of Mexico is pretty much just one giant storm. This storm circled around and kind of surprised New Orleans. And it left them basically submerged underwater. Many, many people had evacuated the city. A lot of the police force couldn't get there because of all the water. And so the citizens were left in a state of anarchy. They had to defend themselves. They had to fight for their resources. I love this image here of a local Walmart. I mean, you see this gentleman here with the weapon, maybe that's a shotgun or some kind of rifle, just riding his bike in Walmart because there's nobody there to tell him no. There's nobody there to arrest him. And what might be even better in this picture is the other shopper who's just going about his business. Now, if these two gentlemen had beef with each other and they got into something, they might have to settle this outside the law. And that's what we get when we have a state of anarchy. If you're big into zombie movies and you're very familiar with the concept of anarchy, basically in a zombie apocalypse where everyone turns into a zombie and there's just a few survivors, we're going to see this state of anarchy where there are no rules, you'll do whatever it takes to survive, uh, and that helps some of my students remember 
Uh, anarchy is like the zombie apocalypse. So now that we've finished up talking about when no one is in charge, we're going to be talking about when one person is in charge. And we can see there are three things in that category, an autocracy, a monarchy, and a dictatorship. And we're going to be starting with autocracy first. An autocrat is when one single person rules and they have all of the power. Um, and you might be thinking, I know an example of that. And that would be the example of the monarchy. You might know it as the king. But the monarch is a single ruler who often gets their power from some kind of divine source. And this is really true in almost every culture. Here's an example of a Japanese emperor who you can see here, he's receiving some kind of divine power which asserts his dominance as king or emperor. And just going down the list, a Chinese emperor from a dynasty, a king of Mali, even the pharaohs. Uh, and the most modern example here would be Queen Elizabeth on the left. She is a monarch of the UK. And then the late king of Thailand, who passed away uh, a few years ago. And for your test, there's going to be two monarchies you must be responsible for knowing. The first is an absolute monarch. Now, an absolute monarch is a king with basically unlimited power. Rules and laws do not apply to this king. The other form that you need to know is a constitutional monarch. And a constitutional monarch is limited by a constitution or a set of rules, meaning they are not above the law. They need to follow the rules just like everyone else. Now, monarchies have changed over time. Again, using King Louis XIV as an example, he was an absolute monarch that really abused his power. Take a look at the time in which he was ruling. That was back then. Nowadays, monarchs really don't have his unlimited power, and there's a few reasons why. If we take a step back and look at the events of 1215, which, yes, was before Louis's time, but hey, he's French, he's not English, King John II was somebody who had to give away some of that absolute power. He didn't really want to give away this power. No king ever really does. But the nobles and the knights kind of forced him to do that. And this was the first instance in an absolute monarch losing some of their power. We would see this happen again in the Glorious Revolution where the citizens of the country take more power away from the absolute monarch. And so we start to see a change in how much power the monarchy has. And so now you see more modern examples of kings. For example, this is King Felipe VI of Spain. He's what we would call a constitutional monarch. He has to follow his rules, King Louis, and that's just that. Yes, he has a tremendous amount of power, and he's important culturally in his country, but he cannot simply do whatever he wants to do. That is what separates an absolute monarch and a constitutional monarch. Now, one more thing you're going to actually have to know about a monarch is that they are hereditary. They are going to pass down that power to their offspring or their children. And it could be a prince or it could be a princess who will one day rule. Uh, and we show that here with the Jack of Diamonds. It, you know, say you are a two or a nine or a seven, you're not in the royal family and you're never going to be a monarchy unless you marry into that family. But if you are of royal blood, like our Jack of Diamonds here, he is at least guaranteed a spot in line to rule next. Now the last form of government that's going to have one person in charge will be that of a dictator. Now a dictator is an autocrat who rules by force. They're going to probably take over their country's former government and start a new regime or start a new government where they are the leader and they rule by force. If anybody doesn't like it, they're probably going to meet a gruesome end. And so we have people like Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, and Kim Jong-un. All right, and now finally we're in the sum category of a few people who might have power. This is kind of a strange word. It's pronounced oligarchy. And an oligarchy is just a small group of people who have power over others in their country. Oftentimes they oppress others by keeping their small group very, very elite and very, very untouchable. The small group in power might be the same political party. They might be the wealthy elite. They might belong to a particular religion or even just a race, a specific race or ethnicity. When looking for examples of an oligarchy, we're going to actually start in the past. 
And we're going to start with South Africa. Now in South Africa, there was a small group of people who were predominantly from one race, and they were the white people in South Africa, and they oppressed all the other races and kept them under control. This was known as apartheid, and they had to fight. Um, the people of South Africa had to fight to break free from this oligarchy. Another example might actually be the United States. Now this is very, very debatable because we would think of ourselves as a democracy. But some people might argue, well, who's really in control in the United States? Who do we always see in the White House? And if you really think about it, you can understand that argument. Powerful families in our government, like the Bush family, having two presidents and a state governor, uh, that's a powerful family with a lot of control. It's a small group. We also see the Kennedy family. Again, presidents, senators, people who work in Congress, all coming from one family. You might classify that as an oligarchy, but it's not really truly a country that's run by an oligarchy in the formal sense of the word. The same argument can be made for the People's Republic of China. Uh, a lot of people consider their government uh, an oligarchy in which a very elite few who run the government are kind of in control and they're never going to give up that power. The bottom line is that there's just a few people ruling or have power and that defines the form of government known as an oligarchy. And last on our list in the all category is when everyone's in control of their government and there's two things that we need to know about democracy. But first, let's define what it is. Democracy is a system of government in which power resides with the people. And there are two forms of democracy that you need to know for your test. The first being a direct democracy. In a direct democracy, the people are going to be voting directly for what they want. It's going to look something like this. The people who are citizens, they vote for what they want, then the government is going to make that change happen. A modern example of a direct democracy is happening in Switzerland, where the people actually physically get together and vote on every issue. This really works well in a small country, not just the size of the country, but the population. The more people you have in a country, the more difficult it is to run a direct democracy, which is why most democracies nowadays are representative democracy. And this is what we have in the USA. The difference here being that we are gonna actually be voting as people for somebody to vote for us to make changes in our government. You might be thinking, well, that's kind of a convoluted way of doing things. But in actuality, when we have so many people spread across so much land, it, it really makes things much easier and much simpler to do. Okay, so let's review. What is the difference? And first, we should define what direct democracy is. Direct democracy is a form of government where people vote directly on the laws themselves. Now, can you think about the three names for the other kind of democracy? That would be indirect democracy, representative democracy, and the republic. And in this form of democracy, we are going to vote for somebody else to represent us, and they will vote for what we want. I like to explain it this way to my classroom. If we were all going to vote on what kind of pizza we wanted in our class for whatever, a pizza reward, everybody would raise their hand or everybody would vote on what kind of pizza they wanted. Whatever the majority vote was, like whatever the ingredient that got the most votes, that's what we would get. Now, in a representative democracy, we would take that same vote. We would all vote on what kind of pizza we want. But rather than voting on the ingredient or what kind of pizza we wanted, we would actually be voting for someone, like a class president, or somebody to make a decision for the whole class. Then that person would be elected. That person would then represent us in a governing body, and they would choose what kind of pizza we all got. Okay, it's time to review, and the first question is, how can we define a form of government? That would be the way a government is structured and organized, and also asking the question, who has power? The next question is, can you fill out all of these different forms of government in the none column, the one column, the some column, and the all column? Okay, the correct answers would be anarchy, autocracy, Monarchy, dictatorship, 
oligarchy, direct democracy, and representative democracy. Okay, next review question is, which monarch is limited by a set of written rules? And that, of course, would be a constitutional monarch. They are limited by the constitution or the set of rules for that government. And the next review question is, which form of government does the United States have? And the first question we need to ask is, who rules here in the USA? That would be all. And if everyone rules, we have some kind of democracy. And so we have to ask next, do we vote directly for something, or do we vote for representatives to choose for us? And correct, we choose, we, we have a representative democracy to choose for us. All right, and last one, which autocrat does not get their power from their parents? First thing we need to ask ourselves is, who rules in an autocracy? Is that none, one, some, or all? And of course, that's a government in which one person has all the power. And next, we need to ask ourselves, where does this ruler get their power from? It's not hereditary, so it must be a dictatorship. Uh, they're not the son or daughter of a king. They just took that power from the government by force. Okay, guys, that's it for our review on forms of government. I hope it was really helpful. If you liked it, please click like and then subscribe because we'll be coming out with more content soon.